our next chapter book is called Swimming with Sharks. Trap for the Summer. Sarah Marshall was hot, bored, and angry. I just wish Mom had asked me what I wanted to do this summer. Sarah grumbled to a big brown pelican who sat near her on the old dock. I could have been having fun with all my friends at camp. She paused, and the pelican turned his head as if he were waiting for her to continue. Despite herself, Sarah had to laugh at the bird's knowing expression. Oh, great, she said, in mock desperation. Now I'm talking to a pelican. Well, at least you listen to me. Sarah stared out at the islands that seemed to stretch endlessly across Florida Bay. Then she turned back to the pelican and mimicked her mother's voice. It's only one summer, dear. Granddad hasn't been the same since his retirement. He's not eating well and seems to be down. I know that having a nice young person like you around will help cheer him up. And so, without further discussion, Sarah's mother had arranged for her to spend the summer with her grandparents. Scanning the popcorn-shaped clouds, clouds building along the horizon, Sarah watched a ribbon of snowy egrets skim over the trees. Normally, she would have enjoyed these sights. Anybody would, but Sarah felt trapped. The beautiful view, the glistening sea were just a nice setting for a terrible vacation. She glanced around her. Her grandparents' house was very different from the new vacation homes she had passed on the drive down from Miami. It was a simple one-story house built on stilts. The house was neat, but it had a lot of repaired look. Even the dock was crooked and weathered. Sarah's grandparents got by with very few modern appliances. Dr. Joseph Stanos had grown up during the Great Depression and had not forgotten what it was like to be poor. He rarely spent money on anything that was not absolutely necessary. They didn't even have a television. She could not imagine living without, for six weeks, with, she couldn't imagine living here for six weeks, weeks, much less 50 years. With a scowl, Sarah drove, dove off the dock into the 80 degree water. It was warm, but still cool enough to be refreshing. A little less grumpy after her swim, Sarah lay down on the dock. Her dark hair curled quickly as it dried in the sun. She watched the water drip off her fingers and make dark spots on the parched wood. Sarah's grandfather stood at the other end of the sun-bleached dock, expertly cleaning some fish. Dr. Stanos was a retired marine biologist who had specialized in the study of sharks. It was a job that had been so much a part of him that he had never thought of it as work. It was who he was and what he did. Since retirement last year, he felt a little bored and uncertain. Those were not feelings he was used to or liked. He missed his students and his work. Mr. Stanos loved his family and his grandchildren. Over the years, however, he and his wife, Eddie, had grown used to their childless elderly life childless orderly life. Sarah's arrival was proving to be much more of a challenge than he had expected. The day she arrived, he made it clear that he was not happy about staying, that she was not happy about staying with them for the summer. She wouldn't talk about school and gave only the simplest answers when he asked about her parents. Studying, catching, even swimming with sharks seemed like much easier tasks to him than befriending a 10-year-old granddaughter. He finished scaling the last of the fish and threw a handful of scraps to the pelican. The pelican gobbled them up and waddled over for more. He tossed the pelican a few more pieces of fish. Then he shooed the big bird away and walked toward Sarah. Sarah sat up, crossed her ankles, and swung back her legs back and forth. She wrinkled her rounded nose, which is already turning slightly red under the golden rut, slightly red under her golden tan. 
One of the few things her grandfather had learned from Sarah this week was that she hated her nose. He felt it gave her a special character all her own. Spunky kid, he thought proudly. Smart, too. They would manage somehow. He dropped the remaining fish scraps in the water. Fish appeared instantly. At a girl, he cheered, kneeling down to see something in the water. Sarah turned and gazed in the direction her grandfather was pointing. Watch that little dam damselfish go after that yellowtail. Her grandfather watched fish like that, like other grandfathers watched football games. Sarah had a smile at her grandfather's enthusiasm. The fierce damselfish was one of his favorites. Sarah reluctantly moved so that she could see the bright yellow warrior clearly. Remember these, her grandfather asked, pointing out a swarm of small fish feeding on the scraps that he had thrown. French grunts, mangrove snappers, and Sarah paused, trying to remember the name of the little, the little black and white striped fish. I know, Sergeant Majors. Good, her grandfather said, as if he were as if she were a student he was testing. Sarah knew these fish well. Ever since she was little, her grandfather had told her their names over and over when she came to visit. She sensed it was his way of showing he cared for her, so she had learned them. Her grandfather's head ducked and weaved as he followed the scene below. Fish were his life. Her smile faded. They weren't hers, however. No TV, no friends, nothing but fish. Sarah thought hopelessly. She took a deep breath and prepared herself from the most boring summer of her life. Well, that's the end of chapter one. Let's see if uh, Sarah's vacation gets any better in chapter two.